Welcome to Cloud Security Basics, a new series where we explain the ins and outs of securing your application on Google Cloud. Sound fun? Then stick around because in this episode, you'll learn about the first of three distinct areas of cloud security risk, access. Hello, Cloud Detective. You showed that you understand Cloud's shared security model, but can you solve this? What can you do to stop the wrong people from accessing your resources? For example, I could use a man-in-the-middle attack to intrude on an existing connection, intercepting and modifying all network traffic between two devices. If I intercepted an admin's traffic, I'd even be able to act on your system with all the privileges of your admin. What can you do to stop that? For your sake, I hope you know the answer. OK, here's what we know. A man-in-the-middle attack involves an attacker getting access to credentials they shouldn't have. We could solve this. But there's actually a broader problem here, access. Access represents ensuring that only the right identities have access to the right resources for your system. For example, you might not want developers to be able to delete resources on your system, so you have to enact a policy or access control to prevent that from happening by accident or ill will. Or you might want to prevent malicious access exploits like phishing, where an attacker tricks individuals into giving out their credentials, or denial of service attacks where an attacker works to overwhelm a web service to keep it from functioning properly. Luckily, Google Cloud provides a lot of tools and services to protect its users. Some of those protections include encrypted traffic and load balancers to combat man-in-the-middle and DDoS exploits universal two-factor authentication to minimize phishing, cloud identity-aware proxy to make sure that only the right people get access to applications, endpoint management to make sure that users are using secure devices to access company resources, and more. Let's see how they work. So how do these tools keep the wrong people from accessing your system? I know that to combat man-in-the-middle and DDoS exploits, Google Cloud encrypts all internet access at the network level by default, eliminating the concern of a passive adversary listening for sensitive information. Let me show you how. Since TLS requires that servers prove their identity, active man-in-the-middle attacks are also much more difficult. And Google Cloud's front end and load balancers support TLS termination while providing an entry point to Google's massive serving resource making a successful DDoS attack quite challenging. Here's how it works. Load balancers report information about incoming traffic to a central DDoS service. If it detects that a DDoS attack is occurring, it can configure the load balancers to drop or throttle the traffic. Google's central identity service, which users see as the Google login page, asks for a username and password and assesses risk factors such as whether users have logged in from the same device or location in the past. The service issues credentials such as cookies and OAuth tokens to further protect users. Oh, and second factors, uh, such as one-time passwords or phishing-resistant security keys, can also be used by users when signing in to help prevent phishing. In fact, in order to make phishing less effective, Google pioneered the U2F Titan security key, a hardware second factor that can be associated with an account so that login is only possible when the second factor is present. The idea being, if you pair something you know, like a password, with something you have, like a security key, phishing becomes very difficult. And it's easy to set up, too. Once you set these keys up and change the two-step authentication to only use security keys in the Google Admin UI, then the next time a developer logs on, after they enter their password, they'll be asked to touch their security key. Hmm, how else can we limit unauthorized access? What about Cloud Identity Aware Proxy, or IAP? IAP makes it easy for you to put up an application on the cloud and configure a central policy users have to authenticate against. Best of all, since IAP is enforced at the network layer, Cloud IAP requires little to no application code changes. So if you had a legacy application that was hosted on-premise behind a firewall and wanted to migrate it to a public endpoint on the cloud, you could drop Cloud IAP in front of it to require authentication authorization against a Google Group or G Suite domain with little to no changes to the application at all. But that still leaves the case of what if the laptop of an admin is compromised by malware? Hmm, that, that's where endpoints management comes in. 
If your platform can be accessed from your employee's own personal phone or tablet, you can use G Suite Endpoint Management to keep your company data safe while letting employees use their favorite personal device. And with Endpoints, it becomes easy to do things like set up policies, like on Android devices, work apps will be separated from personal apps. Or, since Chrome OS is designed for security from the ground up and doesn't allow the installation of software, only use admin access if the admin is using a Chromebook. Mmm, I figured it out, I've got the answer. Hello, detective. I see you've been busy. You've answered my question. What can you do to stop the wrong people from accessing your data? You've noticed that Google Cloud could help secure access and authentication. Google Cloud provides help through identityware proxy, endpoint verification, universal two-factor, and more. All of these features are building up context associated with the access to make sure it follows the rules. The access should come from a Chromebook. The user should have proper credentials to log in. They should have the required access levels and they need to have a hardware second factor in order to get to the particular API. These individual protections layer on top of each other to help keep your cloud safer and more secure. Very good, very good. You've answered today's question, but be ready because next time I want to see what you can do to keep your data safe. So there you have it, another episode of Cloud Security Basics. Next episode will focus on the second of three distinct areas of cloud security risk, data. In the meantime, if you want to take a deeper dive into securing access in the cloud, then check out the article linked in the description below. And stay tuned for the rest of the Cloud Security Basics series because when it comes to security, you can't let bad actors win. <laughs>